Although your text provides steps to calculate descriptive statistics by hand, hand calculations can be quite cumbersome, especially when you have very large data sets with lots of variables. It's a good exercise to go through those hand practices just so that you understand the concepts behind the different uh, levels and uh, types of statistics that uh, you can conduct. But um, SPSS can calculate measures of central tendency and dispersion quickly and easily. It can also generate graphs that can be copied and pasted into documents. So what I want to do today uh, is just give you a really quick navigation tour of uh, SPSS in case you're unfamiliar with this type of software. When you click on the data set, if you have SPSS downloaded successfully onto your computer, you will notice that the data set will appear and there are two views for data. There's um, data view where you actually would go to an area and input data and there's variable view. A variable view would be set up first using the code book that I explained in a previous uh, video presentation. In a code book uh, we mentioned that you would have the name of the particular variable that you're interested in and we're doing quantitative statistics so all of our values are numeric. Um, width it just has to do with how many uh, characters would be uh, in the number. We could have up to eight different integers. Uh, if there's a decimal point needed and uh, obviously for grade you're only in a single grade so no decimals are needed. The label column gives us more detail about the variable. For example, we have age as a variable, but we didn't specify if this was months, days, years, or even hours. So with this label, we know that we're talking about age in years. Uh, if we come down to look at um, weight, we don't know if it's pounds or kilograms unless we've entered that information. And again, this comes from the code book. Now, there are any values that we have to ascribe to scale, continuous, interval, ratio level data. All of those are the, are the terms used for scale data. Scale data is continuous, but um, nominal data, which is categorical, uh, we have to assign a number to this. SPSS really only understands numbers, so if we pick a categorical or a non-continuous type of variable such as grade, we can go to the value and see what value we've assigned it. And if you look back at the code book, you'll see that we're going to let 1 uh, be the numeric value for kindergarten and 2 for first grade, 3 for second, 4 for third grade. This is important to, to remember this so when you uh, print your results or calculate your results, you'll understand what the numbers actually mean. Again, here is a BMI rank. This is ordinal data, so uh, we have to assign a number to that as well. And this is why it was so important at the first part of this lesson to learn how to identify the type of variable that you have, if it's uh, nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. SPSS counts interval and ratio as the same. They call it scale data. Um, but nominal and ordinal have to be entered and um, you uh, have to assign a number value to ordinal and nominal level. So uh, that's your variable view and then of course after you put your your variables and you've explained how they are categorized and the value assignments and all of that you go to data view and you begin to input the uh, information for each subject. So for this subject we have a date of birth, uh, age, uh, this was date of measurement but it's not important, height and weight, percent body fat and so forth. So you can see this takes a long time. Uh, this data set has over 300 uh, subjects and we have quite a few variables that we've entered into it. So for your assignment um, you're going to have to analyze some descriptive characteristics of this sample and it's quite easy to do. You um, can go to analyze here at the top and click on descriptives and select frequencies 
and then simply pick which uh, variable that you want some information about. So we'll pick height and bring it over. And then we can select the statistics that we like. Notice that we have measures of central tendency and we have dispersion or variability. So you for height, it is a continuous variable, so we will select mean and median. Um, we can select mode for the most frequently occurring height. And then to see how varied our sample is, we can select these. We can also pick range and the minimum, maximum numbers. We can even see if it's a skewed data set and continue. And uh, we first get um, our measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode. Uh, we see the standard deviation for this group of K through third graders. We can see if it's skewed. And uh, range. That would help us know if we have any outliers, which I don't think we do. It's a pretty normal range there. And if we come down here, we get a frequency distribution table. What this tells us is that we have uh, three who are 42 inches. It makes up 0.9 percent. This goes on quite a way. So that'd be a pretty short child in this in this particular one. But if you come up here and you see some of the other numbers, we have 20 who were 51 inches in this frequency distribution table. So that's how to uh, to do that, and you can do more than one variable at a time. So let's say that we want to um, create some charts, some graphics of, uh, of our variables, we get an idea graphically how this looks. We would uh, select Analyze and Descriptives and Frequencies. And this time we would uh, we can stay with height, and we'll select a chart. Now, because this is continuous data, we would select a histogram. If this was non-continuous uh, data or categorical data, we would select a bar chart or pie chart, which we'll do in just a minute. And we're going to keep the frequency there, and continue, and uh, hit OK. And we'll see that SPSS will generate for us in just a moment a histogram. So that's very nice uh, visual representation. You can see how the data looks. It's fairly, fairly nice curve there. Let's, uh, let's do a pie chart. Let's see, let's go back. Do it analyze descriptives, frequencies. And this time we're going to pick a categorical. Let's do, um, let's do grade in school. We'll see grades that we have. So we have uh, that information. Charts here. This time we're going to do a, uh, a pie chart. And we'll pick percent and continue. And we'll give it a few minutes, and there's our pie chart. Actually, we have a good representation of the four grades that were in this school. Uh, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, so that's good. That means our we have a nice, um, a nice set of uh, evenly distributed aged children by grade. So it's um, you know, a lot of fun things with this um, in terms of building different kinds of charts. And um, that's uh, an introduction to how to create some uh, 
charts and visuals and run uh, frequencies and so forth in SPSS.